Hello everyone. So today I've got a Tektronix 2225 oscilloscope, 50 megahertz. I've had this thing for, I don't know, 15 years? I'm honestly, I can't remember where I got it, to be honest. Um, and I've used it occasionally, um, but not all that much. It's mostly just sat around. Uh, and then I needed to use it recently for a project, and it started acting really squirrely, and I can show you guys. Uh, first, let's get this trace little ink now. So I'm on channel one. Uh, you can't see, but I got a SIG gen here. It's, I'm going to put a 10 kilohertz, 500 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal in there. So if we do this, there we go. We can move it up and down. Intensity is fine. In and out. Focus seems to be pretty good. However, if I tap on the, the knob, oh yeah, I mean that's obviously not right. I mean it's all kinds of squirrely. Up and down. Just not, yeah, that's not great. So I don't know what exactly the issue is, but let's check channel 2. So uh, let's see, go over to channel 2. Trigger, uh, first channel two, we'll go trigger on channel two, move this over, come on, there we go, and let's see if it's the same, yeah, see it's the same kind of thing here, just a couple taps and it's all over the place, so obviously that's not good, uh, really frustrating too. So yeah, I was trying to use this and that wasn't going so well because I couldn't get a stable signal. Um, but the good news is I've got, let's see here. Uh, can we see that? Yeah, the manual, operator's manual. And then this is what, I don't know how many pages, a lot. Uh, there's no page numbers, but a very thick service manual. So uh, I found the PDFs online. I just had them printed. I don't want to scroll through a thousand PDF sheets, so I just like to print things. I'm old school like that. Gen X like that. So I think what I'll do in the in here is a bunch of checks. You can do uh, test points, um, uh, all kinds of checks and uh, measurements. So we'll crack it open. Uh, I'll check the basics from the manual. I'm guessing we got a couple things. This could just be dirty, but that seems to be more than more than dirty, to be honest. It seems, let's go back to channel one. That's always cool to look at. Trigger channel one. I mean, it's it's just, it's basically unusable. So I could have a, some cold solder joints, maybe uh, where this comes in on the board. Uh, obviously got to clean these, these dials. Uh, they probably have never been cleaned. And while I'm in there, I'll clean everything if I can. Look for anything obvious, you know, uh, busted caps, anything leaking. Um, and again, I'll go through the manual, do as much as I can, and uh, I don't know, hopefully get this thing stabilized and working and uh, maybe learn something along the way. Okay, so I got the case off, which itself needs quite a cleaning, but let's, uh, let's get some light on this thing and take a look. Nothing obvious. I mean, all these could be cleaned, that's for sure. But it shouldn't be so touchy, you know. I will say these guys know how to design a board. Holy cow. So organized. Every single component is labeled. I mean, just a ton of work went into this thing. Lots and lots of man hours. Design, build, test. Super cool. So I think I'm gonna have to get under this this board here to see the back side, see if anything's we any cracked solder joints or cold solder joints, anything jumping out at me, and then I can see the other side of this. Um let's see if you can take a look at the back here. I can not screw this up. You guys can kind of see that. I mean, this thing is a beaut. Look at that. It's just 
<laughs> every uh, uh, whoops every single thing every single component is marked yeah some of these let's see if you zoom in a little bit some of these might need a touch up here they all look pretty good there's no obvious like certainly no water damage or liquid damage but I don't even see any heat on the board much um, and they did a good job here okay so we've got power on here uh, I've got my lead clip to the chassis I'm connected to an isolation transformer and uh, I'm going to start going through some test points. So test point 991 should be 5.2 volts. 5.056. That's within spec. W989. Minus 8.6 volts. That's within spec. Actually, no, it's not. Minus 8.643 is the low. Interesting. Okay. Test point 987. Positive 8.6 volts. 8.83. That's within spec. Let's see. Test point W972. 39 volts. Excuse me, 38 volts. That's barely within spec. 37.24 is the low end. Hmm. And then test point 984 plus 100 volts. 97.5 volts. You're also, yeah, you're also supposed to check ripple, which I might do here in a minute. But uh, some of these are pretty close. So maybe I can find some pots, tweak them up and down accordingly. Yeah, I don't really think this has anything to do with the, the original problem. The uh, funky, quirky, shaky... Uh, display when I tap on the knob, but like I said, while I'm in here, before I start desoldering anything, I might as well make sure this is these are all good. Okay, so I'm gonna check and try to tweak this minus 8.6. It's supposed to be minus 8.6. I'm showing what do we got? Minus 8.7, which isn't much, but it's supposed to be minus 8.56 to minus 8.64. Unfortunately, <laughs> the pot to do this is way in the back, so I gotta lean over this 7,000 volt CRT, which does not make me terribly comfortable. And see if I can tweak this a little bit here. Oh, please tell me that's gonna fit. There we go. I'm going the wrong way here. Let's see if I can go. Well, stay with me. Y4. Oh, I had it. 8.61. Man, we're talking hundredths of a volt here, but hey, while I'm in here, let's see if we can get this right. Come on. Uh, there we go. Minus, ah, minus 8.6. Okay. That's the only one power supply rail I think I can adjust. Check table 5.2. Yep. But that's the only one they say if it's off. Adjust potentiometer 933. So the rest are grid bias, astigmatism, etc. So I will try to do those. Okay, so I dug into this, this unit a little bit. So the first thing I did is I changed out uh, the Aretha caps. There's two, and then there's another line cap. So two Y caps and one X2 cap. I figured they've been in there 30 years. Now's a good time to do it. See if I can get that focus. Yeah, so there's one of them. Couple bucks on DigiKey. Uh, so change these out in the power supply. Then 
I uh, got some deoxit here. Trusty deoxit. Can't go wrong with it. And uh, let's see. Went into. Let's see if I can not knock anything over here. I was a little hesitant to clean up the knobs or the insinuators, the uh, volts division, because, uh, and I should have had it ready to go, but there's a blurb in here in the service manual. And if I can find it, let's see, cleaning, yeah. Volts, volt div and sec div, these are maintenance free. And then in capital letters, do not clean. Uh, caution, most spray type circuit coolants contain Freon 12. Well, that's not anymore. This is obviously back in the 80s, 87, I think. Um, so yeah, I was a little hesitant. Um, yeah, lubrication. Most of the potentiometers used in this instrument are permanently sealed and generally do not require periodic lubrication. All switches, both rotary and lever type, are installed with proper lubrication applied where necessary and will rarely require any additional lubrication. A regular periodic lubrication program for the instrument is therefore not recommended. Now, I get what they're saying here, um, and I'm sure it was true, but it has been, what, 30-something years. So uh, I was a little hesitant uh, to do it, but uh, I'm kind of glad I did. It did help a lot. So if I turn on uh, my SIGGEN here, I'm at I just 7.5 kilovolts here. So output. So I'm on channel 1. It looks a lot fuzzier on the screen uh, than it does in real life. The focus is, is pretty solid, to be honest. But before, you remember, I was tapping this. And now I can tap it pretty hard. And it's pretty solid. Now, there's a little bit of, you can see a little, little squirrely uh, switching channels. It's kind of like when you're in between. It's uh, detents, you know, like right there. I'm kind of like in between. So I'm not terribly upset about that, and I, you know, I don't see anyone tapping this really. Uh, the cal seems pretty pretty good. So yeah, while you're changing, it gets a little noisy. Um, but I spray the heck out of those things. I turned them I don't know a hundred times. Uh, where I was tapping this, and now I can tap it pretty hard. And it's pretty solid. If you go to channel two, channel two, where's my trigger? See, that one's not, not, it's better, it's not great. If I wiggle it a little bit, it's fine. I looked on the board underneath. Uh, I couldn't find any obvious cold solder joints, bad solder joints. Everything looked pretty good. Um, I did take out the attenuator board here. Uh, which is a task. It's actually not fully in yet. Uh, I got to put some more screws in there. I got it kind of slaved in right now, but you know, I even took a, a poker here and I was just tapping around right on the switch. Yeah, that one a little bit maybe. I was pushing on the board, trying to flex it a little bit, tapping on the chips themselves. I don't know how much my, uh, my wrist is not calibra calibrated. I couldn't tell you how much force exactly. But, um, I mean, that's a pretty good amount. And it's not moving. So, I think that's about as best as it's going to get. So, that's the... Yeah, see, that's dirty. That pot is dirty. That's not great. Bouncing around like that. Okay, so I was able to get in there. Get all up in there with this deoxit which is great stuff. Um, this whole row of top nose, ugh, top nose, this whole row of top knobs, there we go. Um, you can actually see the pots and there's two slits in each one. And I was able to get right in there with this, uh, this deoxid. So and it's funny as I'm doing it, you can feel the knobs loosen up. Like they went from, you can just tell that whatever gunk was in there from 30 years, cigarette smoke, whatever, was breaking free. Um, and now, look at that. The course is nice and smooth. No scratchy noise. Position's good. Intensity's good. They have a much looser action. I actually kind of prefer the, the stiffer-ness of their action, but uh, I'm not gonna trade that for a noisy knob. So this is much better. 
So that's great. I did not get to the focus. That's mid-board. Um, that one's still kind of really a lot. Uh, let's get that focused in right there. Um, a lot harder to spin. Same with the hold off, but I hardly ever use this. And focus, you know, once you're focused, you don't legitimately use it. But So this whole top row, intensity, position. Let's try uh, channel two here. So that looks okay. Nice and smooth. Um, fine. Course. So it looks good. And now we still see that vertical line, but it's only when I hit beam info. Um, before I was seeing it again, let's go just channel one here. Uh, was seeing it just as it was on the display, and that's not great. So I'm I'm satisfied with this, to be honest. Um, I'm also a little tired of working on it. Uh, I did learn quite a bit. Um, I've had, like I said, I've had this thing for I don't know, 15 years, maybe 20. I don't even remember where I got it. Um, man, I wish I could remember a buddy or. One of the shops I used to work at, maybe. Um, it just needs some TLC. And, um, you know, it's behaved pretty well. So I think I'm going to call it good. I'll, you know, I'm pretty new to YouTube. Uh, like I said, I don't, I'm, I'm not doing this for a living or anything. I'm not trying to. I have, a, I have a real job. Hey, so I wanted to take a quick pause here. Uh, as I was editing this video, uh, I heard what I just said there. Uh, quote, I have a real job. End quote. And at the time... Uh, didn't think anything of it, but listening into it back, that was that sounded pretty dickish, and uh, that was not my intention. I should have said probably I have a traditional job or I have a brick and mortar job or something like that. So I have nothing against YouTubers. Um, I didn't realize how hard you guys worked. I knew you did, but I especially know now because uh, I've had to edit my first few videos, and that's not easy. So uh, props to you guys. I hope that didn't come across the wrong way, and if it did, I apologize. Anyway, as we were. Um, but I do it for fun to try to learn something and maybe uh, help others learn something along the way. So uh, if you're into this kind of thing, like the video, um, maybe subscribe. That'd be cool. I'd appreciate it. Um, I have a uh, bunch more projects coming. I've got an HP Universal Counter that needs some looking at. Um, I fixed a, well, modified a uh, Gold Star Frequency Counter. I purchased an HP DMM that... Uh, I think needs some work, and I also got an AW Sperry uh, O scope, another analog scope, uh, off Craigslist for like 30 bucks, which is a heck of a deal. Plus, I do all kinds of other little projects. Um, I may have mentioned I've got an ISO dim, so it's a isolation transformer dim bulb tester. I never actually took a video of that or making it or talking about it, but I do have a web page uh, where I talk about it and I get into the bomb and kind of my thinking behind the design. Pardon the speaker there, but you can see uh, also Tyco Forever. Um, the bulb cage there, the, the the bulb lights up, you know, when you got a dead short, whatnot. Um, but that was one of my first original designs, uh, and I think it turned out pretty well. Um, you know, cost a little bit more <laughs> than I would have liked, and took a little bit longer, but that's part of the deal. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll uh, see you soon. Bye for now.